lesson today is entitled Rejoicing in Restoration, and it comes out of the book of Psalms, 34th chapters, verses 1 through 10, and also out of the book of Hebrews, second chapter, verses 17 and 18. And this is a Sunday School lesson, May 27, 2018. My name is Tony Miller. And this is the final lesson in a series of lessons that we have had that has been under the subject of give praise to God. It's about praise, restored by God that praise. Amen. So the aim of this lesson is to identify the mercy and uh, faithfulness of God, to appreciate the faithfulness of God and to pray for God's will and restoration for all people to be realized. This is my YouTube channel, uh, 60 plus lessons on this channel. They're in my archive. Uh, if you would hit the subscribe button and the bell and you'll get the lessons automatically. Also, if you would hit the like button or the dislike button. And if you do hit the dislike button, please leave me a reason why, amen. So my style of, of teaching is hermeneutical in its form and fashion. And hermeneutical refers to the idea that one's understanding of the text is of the whole is established by reference uh, by its individual parts and one's understanding of each individual part is referenced by the whole. My, it's about that there is no private interpretation, that it's all interpreted in its context. It's about the content and context. That's what I want. I, I, I stick with a historical format. I love the history of how the, the, the lessons come together and how they fit together and how Genesis stitches together all the way through to Revelations. I want to know and I want to teach you about the who, what, when, where, and how. Again, content and context, verse by verse. And if, you, if you've been with me for any period of time, you know that I'm highly pictorial. I believe a picture is worth a thousand words. So that is my style and form and how I uh, approach these lessons. Amen. So as I do with uh, most often, if I find words and phrases and, uh, and, and people as well, I try to give you those in, in, in order for us to get some measure of understanding. When we get to those places, the first word is praise. <clears throat> In this lesson, the Bible is filled with examples of people worshiping the Lord through a wide variety of different styles of uh, types of praise. Praise lifts our hearts and spirits and helps us focus on something bigger than the mundane problems that plague our daily life. Praise helps us give honor to the Lord, who is the only one worthy to be praised. Praise reminds us that God, who worked miracles in the Bible, is still working those miracles today. Amen. Restoration. Restoration is to bring back to a former position or condition the reconstruction of the original form. And that's a big part of our lesson to this, coming back to a former condition. Amen. Psalms. So, our, so obviously we're in the book, 34th chapter of the book of Psalms. Psalms is a Hebrew poetry that doesn't rhyme or, or, or have a rhythm. It's unique characteristics. Uh, characteristic uh, is uh, repetition of thought called parallelism. The poet will make a statement in one line and then in the second line, perhaps in the third line, he'll repeat that thought, extend it or contrast it with an opposite idea. Like for example, you see in the bottom uh, uh, text, purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean, wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Again, that is the, how the Psalms are formed in our lesson as well. One of the words is not in our lesson, but it is this acrostic, and our and our uh, Psalms thirty four is an acrostic uh, uh, acrostic um, psalm, uh, I, and an acrostic is a type of poem where the first, uh, last, or other letters they spell out a word or a phrase. The first letter is more commonly used in an acrostic poem. If you look at the example on the other side, those words form that word acrostic. Uh, in our text in Psalm 34, they actually form the Greek alphabet, I mean the Hebrew alphabet with the exception of, uh, I think, one or, two one or two verses. Amen. So the background for Psalms 34, uh, it is a poem of David. David is a writer. Uh, when, uh, when he changed his behavior uh, before Abimelech, uh, who was the... Uh, uh, it was a king, we'll get to that in a second, who drove him away and uh, he departed. Psalm 34's historical background uh, uh, of this acrostic poem, which I mentioned is related uh, to the first Samuel 
uh, 21, 10 through 15. It bears all the marks of uh, the testimony of the one who narrowly escaped death, just as the passage in Samuel described. As such, it contains the praise and testimony of the one who is redeemed, as in verses 1 through 10. And the second uh, season instruction can be stemmed uh, from these other verses in uh, verses 11 through 22. Uh, Psalm 34, again, is acrostic uh, based on all the letters of the Hebrew al alphabet except one, as I mentioned previously. Amen. Saul. So uh, Saul is one of the people in this lesson. He is God's chosen one to lead the scattered nation of Israel, that collection of, tw of uh, those uh, 12 tribes that did not have a central leader other than God and no formal government. They were in this whole mode of where they had judges and, and Saul happened to be the first uh, king that, uh, that this band of God's chosen people had. Amen. David. David is believed to have been uh, 12 to 16 years of age when he was anointed king of Israel. He was the youngest of Jesse's son, an unlikely choice of king. Humanly speaking, Samuel, who was a prophet, he thought David's older son uh, would surely be anointed, be the anointed one. But God told Samuel, do not consider his appearance, talking about David, or his height, or uh, for I have... Uh, rejected him, or through Thomas, I'm talking his son of sorry, the oldest. The Lord does not look at things uh, that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. So seven of Jesse's sons passed before Samuel, again that prophet, but God had chosen none of them. Samuel asked if Jesse had more sons, and the youngest son David was out tending sheep. And so they called for the boy. And Samuel anointed David with oil. And from that day on, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon David. And David became a great mighty man of God. Amen. So this uh, relationship between uh, Saul and David was contentious uh, because David was this heir who's going to secede uh, uh, Saul as the king. Uh, Saul... Uh, uh, Saul did not want to uh, to have this uh, David as his uh, successor. So David uh, was talking uh, to the people about how he thought he could take out Goliath. And David took, uh, and, and uh, Saul took David's uh, word. And then he allowed him to, to fight this one Goliath. So David took out, took with him, uh, five, uh, his staff and five smooth stones and we know that a lot of preachers preached that lesson and say that he he only needed one but it, but uh, Goliath had four brothers uh, his shepherd's bag and a sling and Goliath was not intimidated by David but neither was David intimidated by the giant and David said to the Philistine you come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin but I come against you in the name of the Lord God Almighty and the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. And this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hands, what David says. And David, uh, trust in God and his zeal for God's glory are remarkable. And David did kill Goliath. And he also entered into Saul's service as a full-time uh, warrior, no longer tending his father's sheep. Amen. Uh, again, this background is Saul's jealousy of David turned to murderous, that uh, that he tried to have David killed by the hands of the Philistines by asking David to become his son-in-law. The king offered his daughter in return to David's military service. David, in humility, refused, and Saul's daughter was given to another. And uh, Saul's other daughter, Michael, was in love with David. Uh, so Saul asked him again, and David again refused due to the lack of his wealth. He didn't have a dowry and, and uh, his inability to afford the, the bride's price of the, uh, the uh, daughter of the king. So Saul asked, uh, asked for a hundred Philistine foreskins, hoping that David will be slaughtered by the enemy, those Philistines. But when David killed 200 Philistines, doubling the required payment, Saul realized that he was unmatched and his fear of David increased. And, uh, and ultimately, 
uh, Jonathan and Michael warned David of his father's murderous intent, and David spent the next few years of his life fleeing from the king. And that David wrote several of the uh, song, uh, songs, which are these psalms, uh, during which that time, and many of these are those psalms which we are and we're talking about, uh, and especially Psalm 34 today. Amen. Abimelech, uh, 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 Asius, uh, and Abimelech, the Philistine king of Gath during the time of Saul. He was a man named Asius. Uh, once David had to pretend to be insane to avoid him. Uh, later, Asius hired David as a mercenary fighter, uh, but excused him from participating in war against Israel. He also gave David the city of uh, Kilag, which was another one of those uh, cities in uh, Gad and uh, Kilag are, are both cities in uh, Palestine and uh, Philistine. Uh, Asius uh, seemed to be uh, his personal uh, name, but uh, Abimelech was a true name. Uh, that's a, the which means my father is king, and it probably was a royal uh, title more than it was uh, his name. But we know about Abimelech throughout the Bible. Amen. Term again, high priest, the chief priest of the historic Jewish uh, religion. From the he was from the line of uh, Aaron. Uh, for every high priest was chosen among the men or among the other uh, priests, and it, and it was a. Uh, appointed to act on behalf of men in relationship to God and to offer gifts and sacrifice for the sins that they did the sins sacrifice in the temple. Amen. We go from the book of Psalms and we have two verses in the book of Hebrews uh, in our lesson today, although some include uh, the book of Hebrews among the Apostle Paul's writing uh, the certain identity uh, of the author remains on uh, maze, remains an enigma uh, missing is Paul's customary salutation uh, is common in all of his other works which he says Paul I'm apostle and he mentioned you know recognize who he, who he is in, in addition the suggestion that the writer of this, this epistle relied upon knowledge and information provided by others who were actual eyewitness of Christ Jesus makes Pauline authorship doubtful some attributed um, uh, should we Luke as a writer? Others suggest the Hebrews, he, the book of Hebrews may have been written by Apollos, or Barnabas, or Silas, or Philip, or Aquila, or Priscilla. Regardless of the human hand that held the pen, the Holy Spirit of God is the divine author of all scripture. Therefore, Hebrews speaks with the same canon, canonical, can, canonical, or is a canon authority as the other 65 books of the Bible. Amen. So I've given you this uh, background, uh, maybe a little clunky, but it is uh, the background in words and people that brings us to this point in our lesson. So now to a Sunday school lesson, rejoicing in restoration, Psalms 34 verses 1 through 10. And we'll go verse by verse. Uh, Psalms 34 and 1. Uh, this is a Psalm of David regarding the same, uh, regarding the time he pretended to be insane in front of a, that King Abimelech of, Bimlip, of uh, the Philistines who sent him away. Uh, and it begins, I will praise the Lord at all times, is, and I will constantly speak his praises. Uh, this is a New Living Transact Translation. Uh, if you go to the King James, uh, you're probably more familiar with this text. It says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. So again, this David is the writer of uh, the Psalms 34. And I mentioned to you that David had just killed this, uh, killed Goliath and, uh, and, uh, and, and he has, Saul has him, uh, that he's been uh, anointed as king by, by Samuel. And Saul has him on the run and he now is living amongst those Philistines. You know, they, uh, Saul had sent him to, to kill the, the, the Philistines and, and, and he did. Uh, but uh, ultimately, he ended up living amongst the Philistines and ultimately be fighting amongst those Philistines as well. He was sort of a spy in a sense in, a, in, a, in the Philistine army. Uh, he did pose to be insane uh, because he didn't want to fight against the Israelites. And ultimately, just like he fled from Saul, he also ended up fleeing from Abimelech, the king. And while he's on the run, 
Uh, he runs into the mountains and such, and he writes these poems or psalms, and David writes the psalms of praise, uh, which is our song today, the praising God through his trials, the trials that he has uh, of being on the run uh, from these two kings, and ultimately he will become king, but uh, right now he's on the run and he has in trials of which uh, he is writing praises to Almighty God. Amen. Sunday school, let's rejoice in restoration. Psalm 34, verses, uh, verse 2. And again, our 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 our, our subject, uh, our, our global subject is give praise. Uh, give God praise or give praise to God. Verse 2, I will boast only in the Lord. Let all who are helpless make, uh, take heart. Uh, or, it could, or another version says, my soul will boast in the Lord. Let the afflict afflicted here and rejoice you know uh god is the only one who is who is uh we should give our our praise to that we we should not give praise uh we saw that the the israelites in the last lesson they 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 had the golden calf and and, and god said thou shalt have another gods before me and that is why our praise is to the one who uh who has our back and that is almighty god only glory to God alone, why God alone is worthy of praise and no one else. Amen. Again, rejoicing in restoration, Psalms 34, 3, give praise to God. Verse 3, come let us tell of the Lord's greatness and let us exalt his name together. Again, other versions would say, proclaim Yahweh's greatness with me. Let us exalt his name together. Or glorify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Or, or oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. It's just something about modern translations. Sometimes they give us more clarity. And, and again, this David uh, would be king or, or to be king uh, is now on the run. But again, in his uh, in his uh, calamities, in his uh us escaping from those who are fleeing and going and going after him that he still gives praise to almighty god and that's our lesson today is we're learning how to give praise to god even in the, the the worst circumstance of our life it could be sickness it could be uh any kind of health problem or or it could be financial or or work or whatever but in all of the issues of our life that we should always give praise to god amen so I provided you a bit of a commentary for these first three verses, uh, Psalms 34, 1 through 3, and it's uh, framed as the call to worship. At the beginning of Psalms 34, David expresses his praise and celebration on a personal level and invites others to join in. First, he speaks of his own attitude and lifestyle of praise. His praise of the Lord is constant and ongoing, and he will boast only in the Lord. His boasting is exclusive. Uh, exclusively about all that God can do and accomplish. As a result, the humble are those who need help will be glad because they will hear of the only one who can ultimately help them. Our praise can lift other people up as well. And lastly, he invites worshipers to speak of God's goodness and to worship him corporately. So David writes these Psalms for us and over the the centuries and centuries that that he gives us guidance and how we should guide our lives and 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 even when the the worst things come in our life that he's saying that we should continue to praise and as we praise we lift up others as well amen rejoicing uh in restoration psalms 34 and 4 give praise to god again verse 4 and i sought the lord and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears and i sought the lord and he answered me and i think that's the most important thing about that that, that when we pray that god hears and and when he does hear he does answer us name it may not always be what we want to hear but he always answers us and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears i prayed to the lord and he answered me and freed me from all of my fears amen Sunday school lesson rejoicing in restoration Psalms 34 5 and 6 verse 5 
and those who look to him for help will be radiant with joy and no shadow of shame will darken their faces. Verse six, and in my desperation, I prayed and the Lord God listened and he saved me from all of my troubles. That I, I like this, that part about that those who look for him will be radiant with joy. It's just like we saw last uh, week in, the, in with Moses when he when he went up into Mount Sinai and he asked for God. He wanted to see God and and ultimately he saw the backside of God and and ultimately when he came down the mountain that he had that radiant joy that he had. Those who look for him are radiant in their their uh, to him are radiant. Their faces are never covered with shame. That that that. That uh, in verse six he says, and and in my desperation I prayed, and the Lord listened, and He saved me from all of my troubles. And I said I prayed, I I pray and I prayed and I'll pray. I'll continue to do it. That much prayer is much power. A little prayer is a little power. A lot of prayer is a lot of power. Amen. And Solomon and, and Paul. I mean, I mean, and David sends us great words of wisdom for us to live our life by as we he shares with us these songs these psalms for our hearing amen so a commentary for those uh those three verses as well verses four through six and they're framed as a call of deliverance so next david tells his personal testimony of his deliverance from king uh, Ashes of Gad, and David recalls how he prayed to the Lord for deliverance from the Palestinian king, and how the Lord freed him from all of his fears. And it shows that David was a man of prayer, and while even while faced with the immediate danger, uh, this is how we ought to be as well. We do not need to wait until a formal occasion to pray. Every occasion is an opportunity to ask God for help. And that is the beautiful part about prayer. The prayer is that we can only affect the things within our own power of influence, but God gives us a far reaching beyond what we could even ask or think. And that's what David did. And as, as this uh, Abimelech, as, as the king uh, Ashish was, was chasing him as he left the Philistine, Philistine, uh, a territory that God delivered him. Amen. Restoration, rejoicing and restoration. Uh, Psalms 34 and 7. <coughs> Verse 7. And the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. That it is uh, just amazing to know that the angels are around us for the angel of the Lord is a guard and he surrounds and defends all who fear him amen for god commanded the angels to guard you in all of your ways solomon writes uh in psalms 91 11 and he gives us this whole understanding that the angels are angels are around us and we know that because even when uh, Jesus was, uh, he had the encounter uh, with with Satan, and 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 he told him that if he jumped down and uh, and he could jump down, he says that the angels would would catch you before your foot even hit the rock. So the angels were around uh, uh, Jesus, and uh, and angels uh, are around us as well. And uh, it's a great and amazing study if you do a study of angels. Amen. Sunday school lesson, rejoice in the restoration, Psalms 34, give praise to God. Verse 8, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, the joys of those who take refuge in him. Uh, another uh, version says, oh, taste the Lord and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusted in him. That, that is uh it is just amazing. It's like we 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 try wine tasting or other things, and it's a and, and we we try different things. But but uh, but but here David says that you really should try the Lord. You should taste it, taste him to see that he is good, that God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Again, the psalmist writing to us. Uh, 
great words of wisdom that we should live by. Amen. Sunday school lesson rejoicing in restoration. Psalms 34, 9 and 10. Give praise to God. So fear the Lord, you, his godly people. For those who fear him will have all they need. Verse 10. Even strong young lions sometimes go hungry. But those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. Another a version of that same is, oh fear, oh, fear the Lord, you his saints. There is no want to those who fear him. The young lions lack and suffer hunger. But those who seek the Lord shall not lack any good things. Again, Psalms 34, 9 through 10. That, that there are times in our lives that we may be hungry and there's times when we may be in need. But, but, but God has our our back and, 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 and God has us in, in the palm of his hands and, and, and maybe we don't always have everything that we need that but but ultimately we have all that we we need. Me and I have all that we want, but we always have all that we need. That that uh that those who trust in the Lord will lack no good thing. That God has only the best for us. Amen. that I share with you the, these two verses. Teach me thy ways, O Lord, and I will obey you and unite your heart and unite my heart to fear thy name. Something about the fear of the Lord, just recognizing it. And it's not just the fear and trembling, it's that reverent fear that we're talking about. Verse Revelation 15 and 4, those who, who shall not fear you, O Lord, and glorify your name for you alone are our holiest. It's about reverence. Recognize that God is in control. God is God Almighty. He is our creator. And with the, and, and we are everything with him and nothing without him. Amen. That we should trust in the Lord with all of our heart. And lean not to our, our own understanding. In all our ways acknowledge him. It's that trusting. That's that that fear, that reckoning, and knowledge, and he is able, and he shall direct our paths. Again, Proverbs, you know, Solomon, the wisest man in the world, he he left us these great words of wisdom, and, and just like David leaving us great words, that, that these two men leave left a legacy of great words to live by from the Old Testament. Amen. So, uh, a commentary for these three verses as well, that it's uh, framed as calling out the faithful, uh, giving praise to God. And David then turns his attention to those who also wor worship the God of Israel. And he lets them know that God's angel is there to protect them. And there is no better position to be than to be able to experience God's goodness. David uses the figurative language of taste and sight to show how truly how to truly enjoy God's goodness. People who fear God can enjoy his goodness and are delivered from their fears. There will never be a want for any provision. He further reiterates God's care for those uh, for for the faithful by standing by stating that they will not lack any good thing. And David knows from experience that God will take care of him and anyone else who fears him. And we know that God's provisions are great because we know that for 40 years that, that his people in the wilderness, that they had the manna and quill, that God provided provisions for them. And God is a God who loves his people that loves those who are called to do his work. Amen. So we've uh, we finished our, 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 our text in the, the book of uh, Psalms. And uh, now we're in Hebrews chapter 2. I'm going to give you an introduction. The Hebrews chapter 2, the role of uh, Christ in salvation. Hebrews chapter 2 talks about the role of Christ in salvation. And Jesus was briefly humbled and took on human form so that he could taste death for everyone. It, it was fitting that Jesus, though, uh, though whom everything exists, was the author of salvation. He shared his humanity so that 
through his death, he might destroy him who holds power of death with Satan. And we must pay close attention to this so that we do not ignore such a great salvation. And that is the, the subject of Hebrews, the second chapter. Amen. So our Sunday school lesson rejoicing in restoration and we proceed on to the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verses 17 and 18 and, and therefore it is necessary for him to be made in every respect like us his, his brothers and sisters that's us so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest and I showed you high priest one who who who's called out from among the old the other priests who comes from the lineage of this uh, David as well that before God and then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people but Jesus being a high priest that the other high priest had to offer continually but he did it for once for us since verse 18 and since he himself has gone through the suffering and testing he is able to help us when we are being tested and that, that is this whole thing that this David King David has, 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 has had all of the calamities in his life and he was able to, to believe and trust in God, that God would, would hold and, and God would keep him and God would deliver him and God would restore him. And, and, and in the New Testament, Jesus is our hope. Amen. So Hebrews, uh, um, I share with you that Hebrews 4, uh, for we do not have a uh, Hebrews 4 15 and 16 for we do not have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weakness but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are yet was without sin verse 16 but let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need and that is the amazing thing about Jesus the very word of God that was in the bosom of the Father before the foundation of the of the world that God stepped out on the edge of eternity, recognizing that he needed to send a redeemer to redeem us as his children, to bring us back into relationship with with, with himself. And he and he, he reached into his bosom and brought out his word. It's the, the, and, and John says that and, and the word became flesh and dwell among us. We beheld the glory of the only begotten of the Father, that, that he sent his word by his Holy Spirit to become incarnated in the woman wound of the virgin and, and our Redeemer Jesus. That he lived for thirty three and a half years as a as a, as a in a tent of human flesh. And then he ultimately gone, went to a cross at Calvary to begin sin, sin sacrifice for us. And, and again, that it says that, 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 that he was tempted in every way, just as we were, but was not, without sin. That, that is our high priest. Amen. So the book of Hebrews, and I'll call on Jesus as how it's framed in the commentary. The writer of Hebrews tells his audience, uh, uh, let's his audience know that Jesus was made like us in his humanity. This was necessary so that he could not only experience our pain and weakness, but so that he could also be offered as a sacrifice for sin. Jesus is the high priest as well as the sacrifice. Remember, just like God said that he told, uh, he told Abraham that he says that God, God will make himself a sacrifice and again God made himself a sacrifice Jesus and since he has gone through the sufferings he can help whoever is going through a trial he is the high priest we can count on for help because he understands our circumstances and we go to the throne of grace we have a high priest who knows our condition and knows our circumstance and, and recognize our sorrow and can have compassion for our circumstances. When we face a trial like David, where we have no place to turn, we can call on Jesus for help, and he will hear our prayers, and he will answer our prayers. Amen. So what did we learn from this lesson that, uh, that uh, we learned from the book of, uh, from Psalms that we should Praise God at all times, especially through our trials, as as David did, as fleeing uh, the the two kings, the uh, um, that fleeing Saul and Abimelech, that uh, 
that 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 he could call on Almighty God, and if he could call on Almighty God, is the same yesterday, today, and together, and and forever. The God alone is worthy to be praised. That we should not be like those those Israelites who 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 have put other folks uh, ahead of God. That that all should praise Him. That that not just uh, that everything that has breath should praise the Lord. That God is great. And we should exalt his name together. And as we praise God, those who, who see us, that we become God. We become the only God that they know. And they too will ultimately become and will exalt his name as well. That God answers our prayers. And that's the most amazing thing that we show in this text. That, that God hears our, our prayers. And if he hears us, he answers. And he provides us with comfort. That even we know that those angels can even give us comfort. They're always around us. And we look to God, he will find them. And he is willing to brighten our faces. That he will give or change our countenance from, from being sad to glad. Because we know that God is on our side. That angels are around us to defend us. That we should not fear. That almighty God tastes great. Try him and you'll find that he tastes amazing. And, and we will find joy in his strength. And, and when we fear or reverence Almighty God, he blesses us. Amen. And David's message tells us that God took care of this one David. That that is what the psalm says, that God took care of this one David uh, as he was fleeing and as he was escaping the, those uh, who, would, who, would, who would come after him. One who God anointed, God had given him an assignment that he had to become the second, the one that ultimately that Jesus would come through that lineage. That that, but but God took care of this one, and 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 anyone else in the world who fears God, that that He would also take care of them as well. Amen. That our our lessons uh, that in this whole series of lessons about giving praise to God, that that God is our strength, that God is who we should reverence. God is. Is, is who we should exalt, that God we should proclaim his greatness, that God is the one we should cry out to, that he is the one who's worthy of all, that he's the one we should sing to, he's the one we should lift up our hands to, that he's the one we should praise, give praise to, and even in the calamities of our life, it's only through Almighty God that we can escape just like David did, that he will provide the restoration for us and, and we should give him all the praise and honor and glory because without God, we are nothing. Amen. And I share with you from, uh, from our lesson that when we face a trial like David did, where we have no place to turn, we can call on Jesus for help because again, we have a high priest that 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 has uh, that understands our circumstances. That he too took on the this uh, a human flesh and dwelt among us, and and we beheld his glory. And he recognizes the the, the circumstances that we have as as being human beings, and and that he has compassion for us. That all we have to do is trust in him, lean not to our own his own understanding, and give our hope and, and on, on this on Jesus. Amen. And that is our Sunday school lesson for this week. Rejoicing in Restoration Psalms 34, 1 through 10 in Hebrews 2, chapter 17 through 18. And this is the last lesson in a series of lessons we had that, that were entitled Giving Praise to God. And my prayer for you, there's something you learned today, strengthen your faith as the Lord provides for all of your needs. And that you learn something worthy of sharing and that you enjoy learning about and rejoicing in restoration and that you are encouraged to learn with us. And I ask you to hit the subscribe button if you so choose. And I leave you with the benediction, Heavenly Father, send us out with confidence in your word to tell the world of your saving acts to bring glory to your names in the name of your son, Jesus who is our Redeemer, is your Son, Jesus, who, who we rejoice in, is your Son, Jesus, who restores us and gives us hope. And he is the one that, that is our uh, love. And, and him, we do pray and ask these things always. Amen.